take two on the electric van de Borkel. It's 5.36 in the morning. We've got a 132 mile road trip to do today. The van currently has 57 miles of range on the clock. So we're gonna have to do probably three charging stops on the way. It's gonna be an epic journey. Good morning. We're back in the electric van. It's very nice and warm, minus three. Perfectly comfortable temperature for the UK. You might have seen the ridiculous video that I made a little while ago about this beautiful VW Transporter Electric. What the actual heck is going on? I don't understand. I'm fed up. Ah, it's cold. It should not be this difficult to drive. Today, we're gonna give it another go because we'll talk about some of the comments in a bit, but basically a lot of people said that they didn't think I really gave it a fair chance. And today it just happens that we've got a job to do up in Doncaster. And I thought, why not give it a go in the electric van? Now it's a bit of a brave move because, well brave or stupid you might say, because the van currently has 57 miles of range on the clock. That's what it's telling us. We're right up to maximum charge. We need to be there at 10 a.m. Normally it should take about two hours and 24 minutes, but this van only travels at 59 miles per hour maximum speed, and we're gonna have at least two or three charging stops on the way. So we're just gonna give it a go. In the previous video, we did this artisan defrost thing, which kind of went a little bit viral on Instagram because I was putting my hands all over the windscreen trying to throw it out, but I found out that the heated windscreen does actually work. Um, so I'm gonna get that going right now. Hopefully we'll be defrosted very soon. Now, just to make this fun, we're doing a competition on Instagram for who can get closest to the time that it's gonna take us. Whoever gets closest in the comments on Instagram or in the poll that we're gonna run will win a 200 quid Amazon voucher and we'll announce the winner in the next video that we're gonna do, which is gonna be at Doncaster Cables. But yeah, it should be interesting to see how long it takes versus the estimated amount of time that it takes. I hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy our videos, don't forget to hit a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet, it's free, and if you hit the notification bell, you'll get regular video updates from us. And we're gonna get on the road now, and we'll see you over there. Right, so it's 5.54, we're only five minutes up the road, but um, I just realized I forgot my watch. You know when you plan a job that's it's quite a big job in your mind and you've got a lot of things to think about and my brain is a little bit fried because I just didn't sleep very well last night because I had so much going through my mind. I just realized that we had the electric, like the heated seats blasting away. So I've turned those off. I've turned the air conditioning off, turned the fans off. I just want to minimize how much electricity this thing uses because we're already down to 50 miles of range. We've got 40 miles to go to get to the charging station. So I just, I'm a little bit scared that we're not gonna make it. Panic moment there because I forgot my watch, but then I'm like, oh, well, there could be worse things that I've forgotten. If I forgot my wallet, then I can buy coffee. That would probably be the worst thing that I could forget. That is pretty scary to see the, the range visibly going down, down to 48 miles of range now, but we've got 38 miles to go. The, the window's doing that thing again. I've just, I've, I've wound it down just to, oh man. Okay. Oh, it's still not perfect. Like, there's no ice on the window anymore, so there's definitely a fault. Somebody said we need to recalibrate the sensor in it or something, but I have no idea how you would go about doing that. I just don't want the drag to create, like, <laughs> a loss of range. <laughs> I know it's not going to make that much difference to drag, but anyway, we're going to get cold. Oh, that's it. Good. We're done. First disaster averted. I literally just got beeped by a lorry. He was like, what, get, out, get out of my way so that I can pull out and overtake this other lorry. And he's, he's just like right on my backside trying to pull out so that he could overtake the other lorry. But I'm restricted to 59 and he obviously thinks that I'm in a normal transporter which can go super fast. So 
we're just pulling onto the A1 off the A14 and we've got 37 miles of range still on the clock but we've only got 18 miles left to go so this range estimation is um, very generous which is really nice. I'm tempted to just turn on the heated seats again. Five point seven miles to go to reach our first charging stop, so we are doing well. I'm pleasantly surprised about this. The interesting point will be how long does it take to recharge? Is there a queue for the chargers? I guess those will be the next interesting things to find out. So next stop will be the Insta Vault at Peterborough. See you there. Here we go. Oh, oh, there is a Starbucks, but it's not open. That is typical. I've used an Ionity charger once for my Tesla. The rest of the time, I've always managed to just use Tesla superchargers, and the Tesla supercharger network is amazing. Instavolt have got a good rep out of all the charging, the rapid charging companies. They seem to have a good reputation, so hopefully it's just gonna be a case of plug in, scan my card, and away we go. Right, so first problem is <laughs> the charging port is not where most electric vehicles have their charging port, it's where the petrol cap usually is. And this Instavolt cable is not very long, so I don't know if it's gonna reach, we'll see. Um, no, it's not gonna reach. So I think what I'll have to do is if I drive a little bit closer, it should work, hopefully. But let's see. Nah, there's no way, that's not gonna work. Let's try it. It might just work. Okay, we're in, we're in. Let's see what Mr. Instavolt tells us to do. Tap your phone or card below. Should be easy then. Authorizing. <laughs> that was easy. Charging. We'll give it a few minutes and see what it does, but it's already charged me 12 pence for adding one mile of range. I think this might be an expensive charging stop. <laughs> So it's 6.45 a.m. And if the clock on there is correct, we've got 58 minutes before we get our full battery again. My brain is now whirring, thinking, okay, 6.45, 7.45 before we set off. We're gonna end up spending more time charging than we are actually driving. That's what I'm thinking now, if I calculate it. Corey and Luke are coming with us to Doncaster. So they are gonna be setting off soon, I think, in Corey's van. So we'll give them a call in a bit and see if they set off and um, we'll have a little bit of a race. They open at seven, so um, in about 10 minutes, we'll actually be able to jump into the warmth and have a coffee. I think that's gonna be much appreciated. So Nathan, our editor, asked me to read out some of the comments from the previous video. And to be honest, they were pretty brutal, a lot of them, but I kind of feel like I deserved quite a lot of them because what you saw was the real day. It wasn't staged, it wasn't like me trying to make the van look bad. It was just gen genuinely first day in the van and everything went wrong. And I admit that a lot of that was due to my own incompetence, <laughs> which is reflected in the comments. David Adams says, excellent video, made me laugh. By the time I finished watching it, my wife had driven us nearly 50 miles with aircon, heaters and lights on, and still had over 500 miles of range in my trusty diesel, which cost less than half of your van. Encouraging words there. VD says, preheat the van using the app 10 minutes before you get in. I'm gonna address that straight away. That works if you've got like a VW ID3 or ID4, which has an app that you can actually 
remotely control the vehicle from, but this VW Transporter ABTE does not have that app. I downloaded the app, I tried to pair it with the VIN number from the vehicle. It wasn't having it, it wasn't recognizing it. Don't wind down a frozen window as it could damage the motor. Thank you, I totally agree, and it was pretty stupid of me to do that. For me, I feel that the sign of a good product is one where you don't need to read the instruction manual. Take like an Apple iPhone, for, the, for example. Have you ever read the instruction manual for your iPhone? Is there even one? No, because it just works. And I feel like any good product should just work without you having to read the instructions. It should be intuitive. Chris Moat says, everyone has a windscreen scraper, it's called a credit card. A bowl of cold water will clear the windscreen almost as well as hot water, so long as you put the wipers on as soon as you've poured it on the windscreen. Some good tips there, and the credit card thing, my only problem with that is I tried it before and my credit card got frozen. There were some really cheesy jokes in the comments actually. I did buy a really cool ice scraper though off Amazon, just in case. Final comment, Marshall Zelda says, I don't know what's worse, the vehicle's performance or the fact that I just watched a fully grown adult attempt to defrost a windscreen by putting their hands on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're terrible for watching this video. You know, what I discovered about that video, it had like insane numbers of views at the start and it's because human beings love to watch other human beings in pain and other human beings being an idiot. So I'm glad for all of you guys who enjoyed watching that video. It clearly went a little bit viral just showing off me being in pain. Go and see that other video if you've not watched it yet because it is pretty hilarious. And there is a link in the description for it if you want to check it out. So let's see how much charge we've got left, <laughs> left to go. I'm guessing it's, I reckon we're up to 80% now. Oh, charging stopped. Oh no, charging has unexpectedly stopped. Charging unexpectedly stopped. Please return plug and try again. What the heck? Oh, for goodness sake. This is why you need an app for these things. Right. Okay, we're up to 92%, that might be why. It's cost us 10 quid, we've added 22 kilowatts. We're up to 90 something percent, so. That's good enough for me. I think we've only got like another 40 miles to get to our next charging stop. So we might even be able to see if we can cut one charging stop out. We're gonna head to Grantham to the grid serve and we should be there in about 40 minutes. Calling Corey McClellan, mobile. Morning. Good morning, mate. How are you? Oh man, it's got so much very happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I have been up since 4 a.m. and I've had about four coffees, so I'm pretty pumped, to be honest. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's cool. We're on our way. We've definitely not been up since 4 a.m., but we're on our way. When did you leave? Uh, about 15 minutes ago. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, well, we're doing all right. We're doing better than expected. So we're at Peterborough. We've just finished our first charging stop. Um, had, oh, a nice. had a nice Starbucks and stopped for about, I don't know how long we stopped for in the end, about 40, half an hour, 40 minutes, something like that. Okay, mate, yeah, speak to you in a bit. Bye, Thanks, bye. bye. So we are at Grantham and we're doing well range-wise. So we've got 26 miles of range still left. Can't even, oh, it's here, electric highway, right. Well, the cable length on this one is pretty good. So that's a good start. So we're gonna click start, Apple Pay again. There we go, starting. and we're good to go. Right, so we are ready to go and our next stop is Blythe Services. It's another grid serve charger and we'll be there in 40 minutes. It's about 40 miles, 39 minutes, 30 miles. It says we've got 58 miles of range now on the clock. So let's go. So 
So we're just listening to Electricity by Dua Lipa and it just made me think, wouldn't it be cool to create an electricity playlist? So let me know in the comments all your songs that are related to electricity in some way. We can have it as our electricity road trip playlist for the next uh, road trip maybe on the way back. We'll put the playlist uh, song list in the comments in the, in the description of the video so that you guys know all the best songs to do with electricity. How about that? So Corey's got his first single that's been released. We've shared it out on our social media, but I've not actually listened to it yet. So I'm going to see if Siri will pick it up and we can listen to it. Hey Siri, play me Corey Noah Mac. Magnolia Sunrise, single by Corey Noah Mac, now playing. Wow. So I've just listened to Corey Noah Mac. Go and, go and listen to his single on Spotify or Apple Music. If I was writing for NME magazine, what would I write about it? I would say it's an absolute melancholy masterpiece, a true triumph of singer-songwriter spirit and an ultimate delight for the ears to listen to. So well done, Corey. Congratulations on your... Um, your, your musical debut. I must say that I used to be in a band as well, uh, but we never quite made it to Apple Music because it didn't exist at the time. But somewhere out there in the MySpace archives <laughs> are a few songs that, um, that my band made. If you manage to find them, then you, you deserve an award because they're somewhere in the dark the deep dark corner of the internet. Shout out to Corey, go and follow him on Instagram and all that. So it's 9.25 a.m. We left uh, Grantham with about 58 miles of range, I believe. We're now down to 40 miles of range and we have 18 miles left to go. I'm getting a bit fed up of having my foot glued to the floor and just feeling like I'm not going anywhere. I'm a little bit annoyed that it's not charging as fast as I think it should like that last charging session that we've just done thanks for all of you who mentioned in the comments the charging speed definitely weren't getting 50 kilowatt hours I'm not sure what what is going on there let me know in the comments if you guys know um, but yeah 17 minutes away from our next charging stop and hopefully we're gonna be able to have a little bit of a break and a uh, another coffee maybe even some breakfast so we'll see you over there so we've got kfc we've got a starbucks i don't think there's a mcdonald's i was quite fancying a, a mcdonald's breakfast actually but charging is delayed until power is available it's not a good sign. Why would power not be available? I mean, this is the only charging point. So it's not like somebody else is using a load of power or something. 27%. Thank goodness. I thought we were going to have a problem there. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're charging. We're charging the final charging stop. The guys should rock up here any minute and then we can have a little coffee and a breakfast together. And then the final 20 minutes and we'll be over at Doncaster Cables. They do an ultimate breakfast. I've never had breakfast at Burger King, call me naive or whatever, but um, they do an ultimate breakfast or a breakfast king. I think that I think I think the colour of the door is correct. It looked bad in the video, but I think it's actually okay. Yo yo yo! You made it. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, nice you look like the bad guy of fire, man. <laughs> oh well, that's I'll definitely take that as a compliment. What the heck is that? <laughs> is that your driving shoes? Luke, how does your um, double cheeseburger compare with the um, hot numbers uh, lunch that you had the other day? This was very small and very expensive, so yeah, I'm going to give it probably 5 out of 10 if that. 
We're up to 84% charge now. It's been charging for 50 minutes. So I'm just gonna stop charge, unplug, and then hit the road. So range and time update. It, we've got 64 miles of range now, and it is 10.45 a.m. So it has taken us longer than we were hoping. I think just due to the charging speed, really. So it's taken us like five hours already, which is double what it should have taken. So when you view it from that perspective, it's, uh, it's pretty disastrous, really. But anyway, we've got uh, 25 minutes to our destination, 17 miles, so 63 miles on the clock. We'll see how many miles of range we've got when we arrive. Right, so this is it. Rocking up at the entrance to Doncaster Cables. Let's see if they let us in. That's it, we made it, we're here in one piece. It's 11.16 a.m. We've got 44 miles of range left, three charging stops, 132 miles, but we made it in this VW Transporter Electric. We're here at Doncaster Cables. Stay tuned for the video that you're gonna see here when we do the EV charging installation. I think you'll find it quite interesting, the project that we've got going here, and we're gonna do a factory tour as well, all about how they make cable. So I hope you enjoy that video, but in the meantime, thanks for watching this one. Subscribe and like if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you on the next one.